Last but not least, I want to look at these two arguments to the perspective call. This is the near plane, this is the far plane. These are planes with respect to how the camera views. Let me actually bring up a white background using notepad so I can draw something for you. Here is the z-axis. We're looking sideways at the z-axis. The z-axis goes forever and ever that direction. This is the negative z-axis, actually. I'll say negative, well, it's still the z-axis, but we're looking down the negative z-direction. Here is our infinitesimally small camera positioned at the origin. And you'll notice I had for my arguments, I believe, 0.1 and 10, I'll guess 10's right here. So when I say the near plane is 0.1, I'll guess the near plane comes here. 0.1, and then 10 we'll just say is right here. Now remember, we're still looking down the negative z-axis, and it looks like 0.1 and 10 are positive values. They are positive values, but they're positive units away from the camera. So this is actually negative 0.1 and negative 10 when we actually think about how the, the camera's looking down the negative z direction. But essentially we're 0.1 units away from the camera and 10 units away from the camera. Well recall that OpenGL knows nothing about 3D space. We're trying to take these three-dimensional coordinates and smash them to a two-dimensional representation so that we render them. And if you recall, here's our OpenGL view into the world and y. This is positive 1 in the y, negative 1 in the y, and this is positive 1 in the x, negative 1 in the x, which is nice. It doesn't matter how many pixels or fragments fill in this area. We're, we just know we go negative 1 to 1, negative 1 to 1. Well, you recall when I was doing all that talk about the depth, when we turn this view sideways, as far as the depth test concern, is concerned, we still go from negative 1 to 1. That's a positive 1. Negative 1 to positive 1, and the z, and here's zero right there. And so anything that's past positive 1, we don't render. Remember all the fragments that have a value, a depth value greater than 1, then we didn't render them. And anything less than negative 1 was like right in our eye or maybe behind our head, so we didn't want to render that. If a fragment's position does not fit in here, then we don't render it. So, for example, if I put a green box out here, I had my camera looking down here, and I said the camera can only see up to negative 10. In fact, I could put this green box right there. I don't know why I put it all the way to the right. But you'll notice that that green box is outside of the range of the far plane here. We said the far plane is at negative 10. So when we smush this scene, the green box will end up out here, smushed with its little bit of depth for the depth test. Here's our smushed box. And every single one of these fragments will fail the depth test because they are larger than positive 1, which is the value that we clear the depth value to. Same thing if there's a box over here and we smush this. What will actually happen is the box will kind of smush something crazy like this, but we'll get into that later. Anyway, the smushed version of the box or this projected version of the box is less than negative 1. All the z values will be less than negative 1, so it will not be rendered. Okay, but if we had a box like this, then when it's smushed, it'll do this type of thing. And the front of the box will render, but the back of the box won't. Now, we don't care about the back of the box because all we'd see is the front of the box. But if the front of the box here was transparent, meaning we could see some of the back of the box, we would actually not see any of the back of the box because all these fragments would fail the depth test. The perspective projection did not bring the back of the box in past the positive 1 range, which is what we're looking at for the depth. Now let's put another box right here. And this smushed box will smush like, like this. Something similar to that. And then all the fragments for this box, even the back ones, the ones that will overwrite because these ones are closer than these ones as far as the camera's concerned, these fragments will all render because we're inside of that range. Let's see if we can illustrate this. Close notepad here. And we have our scene again. Here's our camera. Let's see if I can fly in a little bit. Let's drop our box into the scene. Translate the box, negative three units down the z-axis, and then when I grab this slider here, this projection slider, the near plane is at two units away from the camera, the far plane is four units away from the camera. So the camera is looking this direction, 
Uh, white. Uh, we, let's do white. That blue doesn't help. The camera's looking this direction, and this direction is negative Z, and we're, our near plane is two units away, so one, two, you see here's two units away from the front of our camera. The far plane is at four units away from the camera, so one, two, three, four. You can see here the unit of four. Four units away from the camera, and so everything that's between the near plane and the far plane will get mapped from negative one to one. Now you may be thinking, Jamie, this is this is this is negative one. Aren't we looking down the negative z axis? Isn't this positive one? Well, recall about five, six, seven videos ago, I did a video where I showed you projected space actually turns the whole scene inside out or flips it around, reflects it over the x y plane simply for the depths depth test. Everything in OpenGL is right-handed until you go to the depth test and then it goes left-handed for whatever reason. But that doesn't really matter. We're one unit out here, negative one here in projected space. So everything between the near plane and the far plane will get mapped from negative one to one because we need a little bit of depth there for the depth test. That's important. I actually went to the effort of putting the planes in here so you can see the near plane and the far plane if I come out here the near planes on the left the far planes on the right you'll see we got this flashing blue here I'll talk about in the next video don't worry about that we have a near plane we have a far plane and so this cube fits perfectly it's almost like I planned this huh it fits perfectly between the near plane and the far plane so when I grab the slider and say project the cube when this cube goes to projected space the back of the cube will land perfectly on this one unit out and the front of the cube will land perfectly on this negative one unit out and that's simply for the depth test once we go to projected space it's two dimensions even though it still looks like three dimensions it's two dimensions that third dimension I guess it is three dimensional but the third dimension is not used for our screen space coordinates instead it's used for the depth test and we've talked about the depth test in great detail uh, far prior to this video watch I'm going to grab the slider if I can get my mouse back I'll grab the slider and watch the box it lands perfectly on those units I tell you about it's positive one away and negative one and okay, let's actually fly around and look at that the back of the box you can definitely see is on positive one and the front of the box here is negative one. And now technically this is this is projected space. It is projected space. It's two dimensions. This third dimension simply being for the depth test. Now, why is this important? Why is, I always get people asking me, why don't we just set the near plane and the far plane way out? Well, okay, let's look at that a little bit. I'm going to go back to regular three-dimensional camera space, what this is called. And let's... Let's bring the near plane a little closer to the camera, and the far plane will take a little bit out. So now we have some breathing room. Ah, oh, feels good. We're not smashed between two walls. Feeling pretty good. Let's go to projected space. And now everything from the near plane to the far plane still will be mapped to positive one, negative one for our depth test. And so pause the video and think, okay, how's that going to affect what the cube's doing in projected space? The cube right now is not taking up as much space between the near plane and the far plane. So when we go to projected space, the cube still maintains some depth, but not nearly as much depth as it did before. Let's fly over here, and let me draw the lines again. Here's positive one, negative one, not nearly as much depth in projected space. And this is nice. Obviously, we have more shapes out there. Let's throw the sphere out there. I grab this slider, put the cube back in there, and let, let's let's stick our sphere in there. Translate our sphere into the scene. Move it. No, that's the Y. I don't want to do the Y. Let's do the positive X, and we'll move the sphere back here. And I don't know, let's let's move the far plane a little further, and I can put the sphere out there. Now, if I fly over here, we have this sphere and this box intersecting, but Obviously, the sphere is further away from the camera than the box, so the sphere is going to take up less room than the box. And I also don't want the sphere drawing on top of the box. If I draw the sphere after drawing the box and I don't have a depth test, then I'd see all the sphere kind of smash all the fragments from the box. Let's go to projected space. You can see, oh, now, nice, our shapes fit into that positive one, 
negative 1 range right there. Let's go back to three-dimensional space. And I'm going to fly to the side here. And let's grab... I'm going to bring the near plane back up to 2. Actually, let's go down to 1. We'll go 1 on the near plane, if I can get a perfect 1. And the far plane I'm going to bring in so the back of the sphere kind of pokes out. Can you see the back of the sphere poking out of that far plane there? And recall that when we're doing the depth test, we're only worried about values from negative 1 to 1. Any values greater than 1 uh, are, are too far away from the camera. We're not interested in them. But values that are less than negative 1, they're behind our head. We won't render them as well. So all the fragments, the possible fragments from the camera's point of view, all the fragments made up by the back of the sphere will fail the depth test simply because they're too far out. They're, they're out here. The back of the sphere is out here. So watch. As I go to projected space, Watch, we squish, we squish, we squish, and there's a reason why I put this near plane at 1. When we go to projected space, the planes are gone, but I, I, I'm using this plane for my advantage here. Watch, I'll go all the way out, and you see? Look at that. Look at that. Let's fly in here, take a little look. I'm going to draw my line again. Here is the one unit out, this line here. It's actually this plane. I, I just switched the near plane from, from camera space to being the back of what we're interested in in projected space. But you see the back of that sphere poking out? That means all those fragments there are going to fill the depth test because they're too far out. Anyway, let's, let's get the sphere out of the scene here. I just want to use the box. Let's bring the box back out to camera space. And let's bring this far plane in, like so. And let's translate the box. Can I get the... Oh, I was grabbing the wrong slider. Uh, let's put the... Okay, you see how the back of the box sticks out? Okay, the back of the box sticks out. Let's bring the near plane in. Near plane in. So the near plane is cutting off the front of the box. And the, the far plane is cutting off the back of the box. So what's going to render? As I say, hey, fix my eye to the camera position, what's going to render with these two planes cutting off the box like this? Pause the video and, and think about that. I'm going to come here and say, fix the eye to camera position, and voila! The back of the box does not render because all the fragments made up by those triangles at the back of the box are past the far plane. If I grab the far plane right here and move it further out, you can see we're getting more and more of the box, and then right here is like, okay, the back of the box comes in, the far plane's far, and out, far out enough. Same thing with the near plane. Let's bring the near plane close to the camera, and then the front of the box joins us again. Isn't that nice? So hopefully you're seeing that that negative 1, negative 1, I don't like that color. Let's do, let's do a green. That negative 1 to positive 1 for the depth test is important. And that near plane and far plane are important because they determine what values or fragments or vertices will fall into the renderable view. If it's past the far plane, then it'll be out here. We won't render it because its value is not less than positive 1. And if it's before the near plane, we won't render it because its value is less than negative 1. And negative 1 is the least value we go, the closest we go, uh, before we consider a vertex or a fragment poking us in the eye or being back behind our head. Okay, now in the next video I want to talk a little bit about Z-fighting. It's important to understand Z-fighting. That's the whole reason we were having that blue flashy thing going on and we'll address that in the next video.